This is the new BMW i8, and well, it, it kind of looks like it's been sent from the future, and that's because it redefines exactly what a sports car is. It's more head-turning than a Lamborghini Aventador, and it can out-accelerate a Porsche 911. Yet despite all this, it's supposedly more economical than a Toyota Prius. In the middle of the car, you've got a 1.5-litre, three-cylinder turbo petrol engine from a Mini Cooper. But don't worry, because it's been tuned to 230 horsepower, and that combines with an electric motor, which is situated here in the front, drives the front wheels with 130 horsepower, and together you've got a combined 360 horsepower, hence the performance. Now running down the spine of the car, you've got your batteries, and you charge them up by plugging the car into the mains there, and that's why the BMW i8 has an official economy figure of 134 miles per gallon. Now we'll actually see what it does out on the road in the real world later in this review. To go with its high-tech powertrain, the i8 has an equally futuristic body, which is built from carbon-reinforced plastic and aluminium to help keep the weight down. But the swooping lines aren't just for show, the car silhouette has been carefully formed to enable it to slip through the air as efficiently as possible. Even these cool looking alloys, they're designed to reduce drag and some other features I particularly like are these, the U-shaped lights, the way you've got these scoops in the bodywork, I mean, they're just crazy, make this car look so futuristic. And how about these doors? Oh yeah, that's a cool way to get into a car. And check this out, you can see that the body is actually made from carbon fibre reinforced plastic. The i8's cabin isn't quite as futuristic as the exterior, and some of the features such as the gear selector and the easy-to-use iDrive infotainment system will be familiar to owners of lesser BMWs. But overall, the quality and attention to detail in the i8 is impressive. Obviously, being a BMW, there's absolutely loads of options available. For instance, you can get lasers for the headlamps, which can mimic daylight, and then can send a bright white beam 600 metres up the road. You can also get some Louis Vuitton luggage for the boot, but that's rather expensive. At least the government will help you out with some of the cost, as being a plug-in hybrid means the i8 qualifies for a £5,000 grant, while emitting just 49 grams per kilometre of carbon dioxide makes it free from road tax, London congestion charge exempt, and it will cost you less in company car tax than a BMW 318D. It's incredible! And you can really show off its eco credentials by putting it into e drive mode. And then you can drive on electric power alone for up to 22 miles and up to speeds of 75 miles an hour. And actually, if you program a destination into the sat nav, it'll save enough battery so that for the last part of your journey, it drives in electric mode. And that means that you can roll up the driveway of your mansion and hear the gravel just crunching under your tyres. Thing is, the i8 is supposed to be a sports car. So let's put it into sports mode and see just how sporty it is. When you do this, the dials turn red, the throttle response sharpens, and the gearbox holds onto its gears for longer. Mash the accelerator and the i8 will go from 0 to 62 miles an hour in just 4.4 seconds, which is slightly faster than a Porsche 911 Carrera S. What those numbers don't tell you though is just how this car responds to the throttle when you're actually moving along. For instance, like 360 horsepower isn't actually that huge a number these days, but this car, the way the, the petrol engine and the, the electric motor work together in perfect harmony, you've actually got more pulling power than a Ferrari 458 Italia, and that makes this thing an absolute weapon for overtaking. But what about the handling? Well, maybe this is one area where the i8 isn't quite what you expect. It actually drives more like a GT car than a sports car, because while it steers precisely, stays nice and flat under cornering, and has strong brakes, it's not actually set up to put in super fast lap times like a 911 is. The thin fuel saving tyres mean it can never carry the corner speeds of the Porsche, and even when you turn the driver's aids off, the four wheel drive grip means this is one BMW you can't actually drift. But the i8 isn't meant for the track, it's a road car, and a blooming good one. And really though, for driving on normal roads, this thing handles absolutely well enough, thank you very much. And let's face it, people who buy this kind of car mainly live in the city. And the ability to have that, that sudden turn of pace that you get from that electric motor far outweighs the benefits of being able to do skids round a roundabout. 
However, there is something ever so slightly unsporty about this car. For instance, when you're just pootling along and you, you put your foot down and the petrol engine kicks in, when you first hear it, it sounds just a little bit rattly and you can tell it's just a small engine with only three cylinders. Now, BMW tries to supplement that sound by piping the very best parts of the engine noises through the car speakers, like, well, have a listen to this. And that it just sounds maybe a little bit artificial. It's slightly overly loud, and I just wish you could turn it down. At least it helps drown out the tyre roar you get when travelling at speed over rougher tarmac. Speaking of which, despite the adaptive suspension, the i8 still bounces about quite a bit over bumps, though it's never really uncomfortable. There are some other minor idiosyncrasies I've noticed after spending a bit of time with this car. One of these these pillars here they're very very fat so when you're pulling out at a junction in town they create a big blind spot and you can often miss cyclists which is not a good thing when you're driving an electric car because they can't hear you coming also you get big blind spots with the rear pillars as well which is once again that's annoying another thing is these really cool led lights which glow blue at night look cool but they reflect in the windows and it kind of makes you feel like you're i don't know you're being invaded by aliens and then look at this right if i wind the window down for a bit of fresh air it doesn't go all the way down so that can be annoying when you're trying to deal with a ticket machine or if you just want to drive along with your elbow resting on the window ledge like that which let's face it quite a lot of bmw drivers like to do that don't they then there's the small boot Looks like you'll need that bespoke Louis Vuitton luggage to make the most of the space. In-car cubbies aren't great either, even for a sports car. And while the i8 has some back seats with ISOFIX fittings, there's only room for very small children. Adults really don't fit. As for the cool doors, well you won't look very cool trying to get out of them in a tight parking space. Overall though, the BMW i8 is such a special thing that you can forgive it of its minor downsides. And that brings us on to its real world economy. After around 50 miles with the car, we averaged 40.5 miles per gallon, which is way off the official figure. Really, anyone who can spend £100,000 on a car is probably not that bothered with fuel bills anyway. And what about the fact that it's not as good to hoon about on a twisty road as a Porsche 911? Well, most people who are going to buy this are going to live in the city. And there in the city, this car with its sudden turn of pace, the fact you can run it on electric power alone, the way it just looks amazing and from the future, well, it's probably actually a better buy. And I think that overall, this really is a fabulous new type of sports car. But if you want something more traditional, you should check out our review of the Porsche 911 by clicking up here and the Audi R8 by clicking down there. Click down here, you can watch our very latest video review. And if you click up there on our logo, you can subscribe to our channel.